How many of you guys have been involved in rough prototyping? This is going to be very quick, because I can see ways of dodging some of these slides, because you know, this, these are the slides I give to the undergraduate and postgraduate students on what is a layer and what is a prototyping machine. So I apologise. You will see machinery that you haven't seen before. Because when I saw class presentation, I actually know what machines are and spoke to lots of machines and technologies that haven't appeared over the, the parapet yet. So hopefully you'll see something it's new. Okay. Everyone knows about layer manufacturing. It's the key issue to how we get rapid manufacturing. So no more machine, no more forming, just printing layers. And the benefits are fairly straightforward. We, don't, we, you know, we can generate data, objects directly from CAD data with limited manual input. It should be possible to automate it. There's unlimited geometric complexity. It's possible. You don't actually have to pay for that. Multiple models in one build. You can have a whole assembly made at once. And it's relatively cheap and quick for small, complex parts. And we've seen over the time that our prototype has been around, so we have a sort of a 20 year window from originally verification models right through now proper manufacturing. So we've moved away from one off prototypes, and people are in truck manufacturing, albeit still a little Cinderella business. It's not a mainstream process. And there's, here's an example of applications, and some of them are really killer applications. The, for this one here, I'm going to do too much detail, but um, this one here, the, the little components at the top, they're made by laser sintering. To get the tooling, it's actually cheaper to sinter a batch of those parts than to low volume injection mold. That's ignoring the tooling, the tooling's on top of that. So there are some applications which are so rock solid, solid, and you can't argue against rock manufacturing, it's just the way to go. There are applications where it's a more marginal decision. In the context of rock manufacturing, you can see there's quite a few big benefits from, from layer pro processes. No tooling cost, no tooling time. We don't have to worry about it in the same way, um, in terms of geometry. We have manufacturing flexibility, we can print on demand. We don't need to find the tool, tell, tell the moulds to mould. We can actually print when we need parts, rather than having to hold stock. We can have these customised parts, one-off parts. We can combine several materials in one part. We may be able to, able to integrate electronics and mechanical elements in one product. This is a big source of study at the moment in the research community. Assemble parts straight off the machine, in principle. And of course, there's no inventory reduction. And that's a big issue for low volume manufacturing, holding on to stock that suddenly nobody wants. There are over 30 commercially available RP techniques. I'm just going to cover a cross section of those very quickly because most of you will know what they are. Okay, stereolithography. We all know what it is. Laser curing of resin. Still a very good technique. The main play is 3D systems. And there's some examples of a, of a part. This is a verification part. Laser sintering and melting. We're moving away from the term sintering and more into melting. The three, the two original players were 3D systems and EOS. Um, now we're moving, we've got a much larger cross section of players and the machinery is, is, is evolving very quickly. This is one of the mainstream rapid manufacturing processes. Again, for those of you know, it's a laser and a powder, and the laser melts the powder selectively. <coughs> and here's some examples. And another thing, big benefit of laser sintering and melting is the range of materials, polymers, metals, and ceramic materials. So about other people coming into the business, whole plethora of, of machine manufacturers making metals machines. Some are coming in and disappearing, but I think these guys seem to be uh, committed to the business now. One, one uh, machine you'll see there, which is the 
the black machine, that's actually a, an electron beam signature machine from a company in Sweden. Same sort of principles of powder bed and melting, but using a much high powered electron beam system. Some of you may have heard of this process. This is the symptom, symptom mask or selective masking sintering process. process. Uh, again, it's a, a Swedish invention. Um, instead of actually using a laser to selectively fuse the powder, you create a mask which is 0.1, you spread the powder, you put the mask over the powder, and then you fuse the entire layer in one go. You clean the mask up and start the process. And that's an interesting approach because straight away your build time does not depend on the number of parts you're making. And that's what you need for rapid manufacturing. You cannot tie the two together, it gets too expensive. Other processes involving certain metals are laser cladding processes, uh, you refer to them as um, powder injection processes, where we feed a powder, bear, a powder stream into the focal point of a laser, and we effectively 3D weld with that process. The advantage of that process is we get some really nice, fully dense parts, brilliant metallurgical properties, and excellent control of material composition. We can change the composition as we go along. The disadvantage is you've got geometrical limitations, difficult to, to do overhangs, not impossible, but it's difficult, and it's fair to say that the surface finish is not as good as the sort of service machine you would see on the NEOS M270 uh, machine. Fusion position modelling, nice easy process. Like uh, uh, your extremely hot beam of polymer, it's like icing a cake. It's a very neat and simple system. Uh, it makes durable plastic parts. The big disadvantage you can see is the grey material, that's that support material, and that's something that is a problem in terms of the economics of the process when we get into rapid manufacturing, unless we can recycle it. Three-dimensional printing, a lot of people say, well, that's not a rapid manufacturing process. And of course, you're thinking about some of the concept modeling system, but it can be used. In three-dimensional printing, we have a powder, but instead of using a laser to fuse it, we inkjet print a glue. And there's, here's some concept models uh, from z -Corp. Uh, but they can be used in, in applications, more industrial applications like making sand moulds and making patterns for investment casting. But I would say this is really a concept modeler. It's not a rapid manufacturing machine. This is a rapid manufacturing machine. Um, the, the guys at Ford get two of these, Paul? Two of the yeah, big machines right. in the top uh, corner. And it has a turntable which allows the thing to automatically unload and load parts up. It's a couple of two meters by one meter by a meter and a half, and a big build volume, can make sand moulds almost as quick as these guys can cast them. So it actually is a different, completely different philosophy to one-off prototypes. Again, from extrude home, we have a metals machine, puts a metal pallet down, and glues that metal pallet down together with a, a resin binder. Again, it could be used for production. I don't think anyone actually is doing that yet. Vauxhall jet. Again, Ford have a, a Vauxhall jet machine. That's not a secret. Well, anyway, I've got it out of the bag now. Understand. <coughs> and what they can do there is print um, investment casting patterns very quickly using a polymethyl methacrylate material and printing a solvent on top of it. Perhaps not the most environmentally nice process quite about that, but it's, mm. there's a lot of solvents about, but it's very quick, and the machine is, is big. <coughs> Jetting, where you're squeezing the whole part through an inject nozzle, drop by drop. Wax and resin are predominant materials used in this process. You've got wax printing machines like the Soliscape and the Thermojet machine from 3D Systems. The solidscape machine will be demonstrated there over the lunchtime break and show sort of parts that you can get off that, particularly for production of customised jewellery, very, very uh, widely used. 